as women. And, and it's, a, it's a challenge, as Patricia pointed out, uh, even in business, but a particular challenge when it comes to public service. It's a lack of self-belief. The first thing that happens to a woman when she's, and often she's approached, for most women, someone will suggest it to you. It seems to be the case. They're very reluctant to go into the public sector. And then they, the first reaction, I've spoken to a lot of our, our cabinet secretaries uh, who've been appointed, who are women, and many of them said their first reaction was, can I do this? Do they really believe I can do this? Do I really believe I can, what if I embarrass myself? What if I take this role and I don't perform? So I think the first thing we have to do as women, there's a Ugandan friend of mine called Maria Odido who says at every level, if you look at a woman, the amount of things even on a daily basis that she just juggles. She's an incredible manager, you know, she hands out tasks, she handles many herself, and yet we don't see our own value very often. So it starts at that very basic level of do you believe in yourself and what is it that you think others have that is lacking in you? And we really need to address this issue. Perhaps it's even a parenting issue, I don't know, but we need to ask ourselves why. Why does this happen? Uh, so we have a lot of reluctant leaders. This is another thing. So you go into office thinking, is it good for me to go into office when I'm reluctant? Sometimes reluctant leaders are the best leaders. And, and we need to remind ourselves of those things because it's much easier as a reluctant leader to keep asking yourself critical questions. Um, I think the issue of, of the ladder which has been brought up is, is a very, very important issue. Not enough mentoring is done when it comes to the public sector and, and women. So uh, why is that? I've seen a lot of young men go in and, and act as PAs to politicians and, and grow and you know end up in office in one way or another. You don't often see women being mentored in, in many different ways. So we need to address that as a critical issue. Um, so, so coming to the, the importance of legislation then and policy making and the change that it's made. In Rwanda, which was mentioned earlier, we've seen Rwanda is at the, it's, it's at the top of the pack globally. You know, it, it beats Scandinavian countries even in terms of women, uh, women's representation. And Rwanda is in, in, in achieving incredible growth and change. So th these were not appointments that were handed out just to meet some kind of, uh, you know, requirement. Uh, 